Post. Thanks so much to everyone for joining us today. It has been three months to the day since the news broke of an alleged $61 million bribery scandal spearheaded by former Ohio House Speaker Larry Householder surrounding House Bill 6. Even before the scandal became front page news, House Bill 6 was widely opposed by Ohioans because it bails out nuclear and coal plants at a cost of over $1 billion to Ohio consumers, puts 114,000 clean energy jobs at risk, and strips away the clean energy programs that have protected Ohioans health during this pandemic. Despite the fact that the bill was part of what is likely the largest bribery scheme ever perpetrated against the state of Ohio, and that multiple public opinion polls found that an overwhelming majority of Ohioans want the bill to be fully and immediately repealed, this bad bill remains in place. The Ohio House Select Committee on Energy Policy and Oversight was created to consider a clean repeal of House Bill 6, but the committee did not invite the public to testify on either House Bill 746 or House Bill 738, the two bills that would repeal House Bill 6, before hearings were suspended until further notice. Ohioans can't afford to wait to have their voices heard on why this bill is bad for their health, their pocketbooks, and their economic future. Our legislators have failed us in demonstrating the leadership we deserve. That is why these hearings have been organized to ensure the public is part of the discussion. We are grateful you have chosen to join us today to share your thoughts. If you know of someone who would like to provide remarks, please let them know we will also be holding hearings on Tuesday, October 27th and Thursday, October 29th. Just look for registration details at our bit.ly link, bit.ly slash repeal HB6 testimony. For everyone's information, your audio and video feeds will only be live during the time of your testimony. You will be unmuted when it is time for your remarks and you will see a transition on your screen as your camera goes live. It may look like you've been removed from the Zoom, but you have not. Give it just a moment and you will then be visible to begin speaking. Response to these hearings has been overwhelming. So we ask that you limit your comments to a total of two minutes to ensure everyone has a chance to speak. You will see one of our meeting chairs raise a flag when you have 15 seconds remaining. Today's hearing is being recorded to be shared with Ohio lawmakers and others. And our meeting chairs reserve the right to remove an attendee or mute their microphone if that individual is being disruptive to the meeting. This would include an excessive use of profanity, discriminatory language or similar activities. We will only be taking comments from those who have pre-registered to speak today, and we will follow your scheduled time slot as closely as possible. We will be announcing three speakers at a time to give you a sense of when you will be unmuted to speak. If you have a question for our chairs during the event, please feel free to type it into the chat box. This process is as new to us as it may be to many of you, but we appreciate everyone's patience and cooperation, and we look forward to hearing from all of those speaking today. Before we begin, I would like to recognize and thank the legislators who have signed up to listen to testimony today. We're being joined by State Representative Juanita Brent of Cleveland Heights, Representative Catherine Ingram of Cincinnati, Representative Lisa Sobecki of Toledo, and State Senator Nikki Antonio of Lakewood. Thanks again to all of you for being part of our event today. Now, we are fortunate to have had Tyler Furman sign up to speak today, who, as many of you know, ran the ballot initiative campaign attempting to repeal House Bill 6 and was directly involved in the investigation around the alleged bribery scheme and passage of the bill. Given his unique role, Mr. Furman will testify first, and we apologize that his testimony run, might run past the two minute window allotted to the rest of our speakers. We thank you for your understanding, and we look forward to hearing Mr. Furman's remarks, as well as those of all guests joining us today. We will go ahead and start with Mr. Furman. Thanks, Tracy. I, I appreciate your introduction. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for holding these hearings and allowing me to share my testimony. My name is Tyler Furman. And I'm a lifelong conservative Republican, an experienced political strategist, and an environmentalist who deeply cares about the state of the world we live in. I currently serve as the policy director for Clean Fuels Ohio, an organization who has joined in the fight to repeal House Bill 6. In 2019, I was in charge of managing the ground game and grassroots efforts for the House Bill 6 repeal campaign, something that provided me with some of the most terrifying experiences of my life. I'm not here to speak about those experiences today, as there is an ongoing federal investigation into the individuals who are responsible for putting me and my family in a constant state of worry and fear during that time. But I would encourage you to spend some time reading the stories and accounts that have been made public. Today, I'm here to speak to you about repealing House Bill 6 and why it matters to Ohioans. 
Before we knew about the corruption, scandal, and obscene crimes surrounding House Bill 6, I stood against this bill for two reasons. Number one, because it was a corporate handout designed to do a favor for political donors, $1.5 billion of taxpayer money should have never been given to save a failing nuclear power company. And number two, because I believe that we should do everything in our power to protect the world we live in and pass on a safe, clean, and healthy environment to our children and to theirs. One year ago today, on October 21st, 2019, we finished the final day of our attempts to gather enough signatures to repeal House Bill 6. And one full year later, those of us who deeply care about government accountability, transparency, and decency are still fighting this corrupt legislation championed by vile and calculated political tyrants who sought not to serve the people of Ohio, but themselves by lining their pockets and obtaining power for personal and political gain. I had hoped to deliver these remarks directly to the members of the state legislature, and I was disappointed to learn that they had no plans to hear the voices of Ohioans concerned about our state. For a moment, I would like to speak directly to Ohio House Speaker Bob Cup. Mr. Speaker, I believe you're a good man who cares about our state. You have been given an opportunity to lead differently than your predecessors, the last two of which have been given to corruption and misconduct. Give the people of Ohio a hearing on this bill. Allow their voices to be heard. Hold a hearing, hold a vote, and do it immediately. We are pleading with you to begin the process of restoring the trust of the people of Ohio in those who are elected to serve them. It is imperative that as speaker, you hold a vote and repeal House Bill 6. To the members of the Ohio House still defending House Bill 6 and upholding it as good legislation, State Representatives Bill Seitz, John Cross, Jay Edwards, Jamie Callender, Scott Wiggum, Dick Stein and DJ Swearingen, you have maintained that this legislation is responsible policy, that it is not a corporate handout and a grossly inappropriate use of taxpayer dollars. And you know that Ohioans deserve better. Stop lying to your constituents. Stop defending this ridiculous attempt at political power grabbing. You can redeem yourselves as servants of the constituents who elected you by stopping this abhorrent political charade and working with us to repeal House Bill 6 immediately. If you choose not to, it is my personal promise that I will do everything in my power to work with anyone willing to help, to identify and support candidates who will. Consider this your notice. Friends and fellow concerned Ohioans, we must demand more from our elected officials. House Bill 6 bailed out a failed corporation with the hard earned tax dollars of Ohioans, something the GOP, my own party, claims to stand against. It also stripped our state of meaningful environmental regulations and puts the health and safety of countless men, women, and children at risk. This was irresponsible policy when it was proposed before we knew about it being a part of the largest corruption scandal in Ohio's history. And now that we know, it is not only irresponsible, horribly written policy, but it is also a disgusting attempt by lobbyists, political operatives and elected officials to set themselves above the law and get away with crimes that have detrimental effects on the trust of the people of our state. Members of the Ohio legislature from both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats must come together now to listen to the overwhelming majority of Ohioans and repeal House Bill 6. A year ago today, we put up our clipboards and our petitions and the official campaign to repeal House Bill 6 ended. If I had the opportunity, I would do it again a thousand times over even the parts I didn't expect that put my life and career at great risk. Now, a year later, our fight is not over. I'm not giving up. I'm asking you to stand alongside me in the battle to restore public trust, hold government accountable, protect our environment, and repeal House Bill 6. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Furman, for your powerful remarks.
it affirms to us why repealing this bill is every bit as important today as it was the day that the news first broke. So thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Tracy. Okay, we will now move on to our next witness. And just to give a sense of the next few on our list, we will start with Michelle Timmons, who will be followed by Lee Blackburn and Jacqueline Gillen. Mrs. Tim, you're up. Let's try that again. I was muted. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Michelle Timmons from Reynoldsburg. I'm a small business owner and I also represent the more than 85,000 members of Moms Clean Air Force in Ohio. While our legislators may not remember me, I certainly remember you. Just 544 days ago, on April 23rd, 2019, I urge the legislature to vote no on House Bill 6 and instead to develop a comprehensive energy plan for Ohio. We asked Ohio's leaders to develop an energy plan that works for business owners like me, for our economy and for our health. Instead, they gave us House Bill 6. So here I am again. As I've mentioned before in the previous testimony, I know bad air. I grew up in Steubenville in the 1970s when it was one of Ohio's most polluted cities and one of America's most polluted cities. And I was one of the kids that had to participate in the Harvard University six city lung study. I'm also the mother of an 18 year old son who's been suffering from asthma since he was six months old. During that time, my family spent thousands of hours administering breathing treatments, going to doctor's appointments, making late night emergency room runs when his asthma was out of control. During his earliest academic career, John lost about 10 days of school and academic instruction every year due to asthma. House Bill 6 has always been bad legislation. It grants FIRST Energy Solutions $1.5 billion in taxpayer subsidies to bail out failing nuclear power plants and two dirty coal plants. It guts our successful clean energy programs. To make matters worse, we also now know that it took $61 million in bribes to get this bad legislation passed. I'm the mother of three sons. When I found out one of them had done something they shouldn't, I directed them to correct their actions immediately. And I'm shocked that so much time has passed since the news broke about the bribes and intimidation tactics around House Bill 6, and yeah, there's still no repeal in the works. My message to Ohio legislators, our children are watching you. We are teaching them that bribery and corruption win the day. I am calling on you to set a better example. You have had months to restore our faith and confidence in your leadership. And instead, you're showing them what lack of integrity looks like. Ohio legislators have a choice to make. Reward corruption and failed energy sources of the past or create good jobs, protect clean air for our children into the future. I urge you to choose wisely. Please repeal House Bill 6 now. Thank you so much, Michelle. We really appreciate you being with us today. Next, we're going to hear from Lee Blackburn, who will be followed by Jacqueline Gillen and Kyle Bayard Scott. Do we have Lee? Lee, if you're with us, we I think maybe you're muted. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, Is there we better? go. Sure, and feel free to turn on your, your video as well. Okay. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Lee Blackburn, and uh, I speak in favor of House Bill 6. Um, although most testimony will be about the need to repeal House Bill 6, my testimony is about why we need major changes in the legislature if we expect this to happen. In the affidavit presented in July, paragraph 70, notes the Householder Enterprise recruited 21 candidates who voted for him for speaker, with all but two going on to vote for House Bill 6. The recruitments for Team Householder entailed spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on behalf of the candidates by Larry Householder, Generation Now, and First Energy. All but one of those individuals are still in the Ohio House, including Larry Householder himself. We're still Householder, Generation Now, and First Energy spent additional monies on over a dozen primary candidates just this past April, including over $600,000 on a single candidate to ensure his primary victory. If that isn't bad enough, Bob Cup, who was elected Speaker of the House to replace Larry Householder and who set up the Select Committee on Energy Policy and Older Oversight, not only voted for House Bill 6, but has also taken close to 25,000 from First Energy over the years. In addition, Sam Randazzo, chair of the PUCO, who spoke before the selected committee and has been accused of having a conflict of interest over House Bill 6, has contributed to Speaker Cup's election campaign on multiple occasions. What's more, James Hoops, who was appointed to be chair of the select committee, has himself taken thousands of dollars from First Energy, as well as voted for House Bill 6. Additionally, two members of Team Householder currently sit on the committee and five members in all or a third of the committee voted for House Bill 6, yet we expect these same members to now turn around and vote to repeal it. Without a ma major shakeup in the Ohio House of Representatives, a repeal of House Bill 6 is questionable at best. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your remarks today. All right, next we will hear from Jacqueline Gillen, followed by Kyle mayard scopp and Anastasia Finisco. Ah, there you are. Welcome. Good to see you. Good afternoon. My name is Jacqueline Gillen, and I'm here as a person that has served in various leadership roles all my life as an elected official with a nonprofit organization working on leadership development, and finally in the environmental world where my heart has been for many, many decades. For people that look like me, for decades, our lived experience has been, I can't breathe. I can't breathe because of the pollution. I can't breathe because I'm choked by oppression or literally by violence. But today, today, we have an opportunity in our grasp, a chance to work toward a sustainable future built on mutual trust, respect, and community building. Now we can address systemic, racial, and environmental injustice that are all connected together. Communities that are exposed to pollution from power plants and fossil fuel are trapped in enclaves that are isolated and suffer from long-term health effects. There does need to be policies put in a place that care for and take into account the most vulnerable, that transitions from the old way 
of doing things like we are now to an energy economy where people and communities are placed first. We need a new green economy, which uplifts communities rather than exploits them, that generates community wealth rather than taking away local resources. People like me right now suffer from the pandemic, economic hardship, and racial injustice, but we have an opportunity to change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. We really appreciate your remarks. Next up, we'll have Kyle mayard Scop, followed by Anastasia Vasico and Lucy Pollard. Thank you, Tracy. My name is Reverend Kyle mayard Scop. I am the Midwest Director for the Evangelical Environmental Network. Months before news broke that Speaker Householder and his associates had allegedly taken over $60 million in bribes to dram, jam HB6 through the legislature, evangelical Christians in the state were already calling for its repeal. More than 53,000 pro-life evangelical Ohioans sent a letter to Governor DeWine and to the members of the General Assembly calling on them to repeal HB6 and to replace it with sustainable, pro-job, pro-growth, pro-life, clean energy legislation. That letter was sent on July 16, 2020, five days before the first news story about the bribery scheme emerged. Even before it became tainted by scandal, pro-life evangelical voters in Ohio understood that HB 6 was a bad bill. And because lawmakers in Columbus have so far failed to repeal it, it remains a bad bill. A bad bill for Ohio's ratepayers on the hook for one and a half billion dollars. A bad bill for Ohio workers, since HB6 hollowed out the state's clean energy and energy efficiency standards, thereby blunting the growth of clean energy jobs, which before the pandemic were growing at four times the rate of overall statewide employment and represented 12 times more jobs than Ohio's fossil fuel industry, according to the 2020 Clean Jobs Midwest report. It is a bad bill for Ohio's vulnerable residents, like young kids, the elderly, people of color, and the unborn, all of whom are disproportionately harmed by fossil fuel pollution. Evangelicals are people of good news who believe that Jesus' promise of abundant life is offered to all people and to all of creation. So we know bad news when we see it. HB6 is bad news. Bad news for Ohio's economy, for Ohio's residents, and for Ohio's natural environment. Tens of thousands of evangelical voters in Ohio understand this and they are saying with one voice to Ohio's legislators, repeal HB6 now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend, for joining us today. Next, we will hear from Anastasia Vanesco, followed by Lucy Pollard and Catalina Wakert. Hi, my name is Anastasia Vanesco. Thanks for taking the time to put this all together, allow us to testify. Um, I'll be testifying today in favor of repealing House Bill 6. So through my work canvassing both door to door and over the phone, I've spoken with hundreds of people about House Bill 6 since it was first introduced. There have been two elements present in all these conversations, confusion and disgust. Confusion for two reasons. The very name of the bill is misleading as a clean air bill wouldn't raise our electric bills to bail out two coal plants and then slash our renewable energy standards. And our Republican-led legislature has made it clear that its members will live and die by the free market, yet they're willing to bail out failing power plants without any proof that a bailout is needed. When the people I spoke with managed to get past their confusion, they were disgusted that our General Assembly would even consider such a terrible bill. I wish I could tell you that people were surprised that House Bill 6 is being considered, but that wasn't often the case. Most people saw this as yet another instance of their representatives putting their pocketbooks before their constituents. And keep in mind, these are conversations that happened before it came out that a $61 million racketeering scheme put this bill on the books. We've known for a long time that this was the product of corruption and that if legislators were listening to us, it never would have passed the first time around. And it's not just the fact that they passed House Bill 6 that proves legislators weren't listening to the, their constituents, 
but also the way they treated members of the general public who urged them not to pass the bill. When myself and other Clevelanders drove down to Columbus last year for in-person opponent hearings on House Bill 6, we were there listening to testimony for more than eight hours while we waited our turn. We were there longer than some of the legislators. By the time it was our turn to speak, committee members who ultimately voted yes on House Bill 6 blatantly ignored us. I empathize with high school teachers who need to keep the attention of a room full of teenagers with cell phones, as I imagine it's similar to what I felt speaking to a committee of elected officials who couldn't bother to look up from their phones while I told them why I was opposed to House Bill 6. My fellow Clevelanders were given similar treatment. Our legislators know that House Bill 6 is a bad bill that would have never passed without a $61 million push out the gate. It's time they start listening to our voices, the voices of the people they were elected to represent, instead of listening to large corporate donors. If they did that, they would know that we want an immediate and full repeal of House Bill 6. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Next, we will hear from Lucy Pollard, followed by Catalina Weggers and Dr. Tom Rapini. Lucy? Oh, Lucy, hold on just one second. It looks like you are you are muted. There you go. Okay. Uh, thank you for including me this afternoon. Uh, there are many reasons why this particular bill needs to be repealed. Uh, the illegal chicanery has been at least partially revealed to us and we are disappointed, shocked, outraged by it. Uh, those who voted for it have a chance to redeem themselves. And this is not just a matter of um, upcoming elections where I can promise you uh, there is energy uh, behind uh, affecting their continued tenure in office, but it's also about history. Uh, do you really want to have Ohio go down for this? I, we're seeing it uh, covered nationally, internationally. Uh, I don't like living in a state where we're the poster child for this kind of corruption, let alone the environmental damage that is being caused. Um, if it were possible to have an honest discussion of what, if anything, first energy needs from the rest of us to deal with aging nuclear plants, that would be a refreshing change. Uh, I would encourage people to move in that direction, uh, but to force all of Ohio to pay for things that apparently are not really needed is unacceptable. Um, the bill's on the wrong side of history, as others have said before me, in terms of economics, in terms of green energy jobs, um, and the support even for a coal-fired power plant that is outside of the state of Ohio really uh, seems like too much to ask of us. Um, AEP has been moving in the direction of green energy. Worthington has an uh, electric aggregation program that is uh, supporting uh, that kind of initiative and it's helped us. Uh, we would like to encourage more of that sort of thing uh, and uh, not a return to the past. So I uh, hope that we will do our best to provide clean, safe 21st century energy that's based on real science. Thank you. Lucy, thank you so much. We appreciate it. For those of you who may just be joining us and weren't on at the beginning, uh, just so you know, you will be your audio and uh, video will both be muted and off until it is your turn to speak. And when you are being asked to speak, it may look like you're being cut off from the Zoom connection for just a moment, but uh, give it just that second. We promise that you will then have your camera turned on and be prepared to speak. So we will now move on to our next witness, who is Catalina Wegers. It looks like she is with us. Um, she will be followed by Dr. Tom Rapini and Dennis Helma. Catalina. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Catalina Wegers from Cleveland Heights. I am a concerned citizen, a C-suite executive, and an activist 
border. Dear Ohio lawmakers, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this testimonial. This opportunity gives me hope that you are elected officials whom we voted to represent the will of your constituents will take the right state post morally and environmentally to repeal House Bill 6, also known as the worst energy bill of the 21st century. House Bill 6 blatantly corrupt approach to Ohio's energy strategy is in stark contrast with the trend towards renewable energy in the United States. Do you know that in 2019, the United States consumed more renewable energy than coal for the first time since 1885? This shift towards renewable energy signals the tacit acceptance by utility companies that it is time to do the right thing for the environment. It is bewildering to me that the great state of Ohio not only is unwilling to take a leadership role in the inevitable shift towards renewable energy, but it has willingly chosen to take a major step back by embracing dirty coal and investing in failing power plants. As if this was not bad enough, House Bill 6 is the result of bribes, corruption, and morally bankrupt officials. If Ohio is unwilling to leave into the race for renewable energy, it at least should keep pace with the rest of the country and the world. We voted you in to do the right thing. You can start by repelling HB6 and support House Bill 738 and 746. This will be the very first step for you guys to regain our trust in you and our legislative process. Thank you so much. Catalina, thank you. We appreciate you joining us. We will now hear from Dr. Tom Rapini, followed by Dennis Helmuth and Dr. Julie Noble. Tom? Thank you. Uh, I'm Tom Rapini. I'm not a doctor. I'm not sure how that happened, but that's not my title. Um, I live in Manor, east of Cleveland, and we have been powering our home with solar generated electricity for over 25 years. Our current solar array produces 75% of our electricity. Uh, you can see us in other solar powered homes uh, on this year's National Solar Tour at uh, www.nationalsolartour.org. Anyways, our solar array does not pollute like all of Ohio's coal plants do. It also doesn't burden taxpayers with its protecting and storing its nuclear waste. In fact, it doesn't even generate waste. Uh, it's all clean energy and we can make it right here on our roof. And surely our energy companies can do the same things at their power plants. The energy of the future will come from turbines on Lake Erie and from turbines on Ohio's farms. The future is utilities working with government to install solar on the roofs of, so of stores, factories, and warehouses. New technologies like solar and wind require incentives to help get them competitive with entrenched existing tech and industries. These incentives can easily be paid for by assigning value to their environmental benefits. Entrenched industries like coal and nuclear and even natural gas should not be subsidized. They should not need incentives. If these industries cannot remain competitive because they have severe environmental and climate change impacts, then they should be gradually abandoned. If these industries cannot remain competitive because the cost of their waste, storing their waste, um, protecting their waste, and protecting them from terrorism, and yes, I'm talking about nuclear power, then they should be gradually abandoned also. Please repeal House Bill 6 and please move us into the 21st century. Thank you. Tom, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Next, we'll hear from Dennis Helmuth, who will be followed by Dr. Julie Noble and Dr. Aperna Bull. Dennis? I live in Worcester, Ohio, and I have been an Ohio resident for all of my 64 years. 
The way the current Ohio legislature kowtows to the fossil fuel industry disgusts me. Even before the revelations about House Bill 6, it was evident that many Ohio lawmakers were in the pocket of dirty energy. For example, establishing the $100 per year surcharge on the registration of hybrid and electric cars, you actually had the nerve to punish citizens for owning a cleaner energy vehicle. That's despicable. Now that everyone knows the extent of the corruption surrounding House Bill 6, the least you can do is repeal it. Get back to Columbus and do your job. Repeal House Bill 6. And while you're at it, repeal the punitive surcharge on clean energy vehicles. Thank you. Dennis, thank you. We appreciate you being with us today. Next, we will hear from Dr. Julie Noble, followed by Dr. Aperna Bowl and Sandy Wood. I can't see my, oh, <laughs> we've got this. There you are. Sorry about that. Good afternoon. My name is Julie Noble and I'm a member of Moms Clean Air Force, a national coalition of parents dedicated to clean air and a healthy environment. I'm speaking in support of the repeal of House Bill 6, an, Ill an illegal scheme involving money laundering and bribes allowed the passage of House Bill 6. Everything we were told about House Bill 6 was a lie. It was sold as a bailout, but First Energy paid more than $60 million in bribes and later provided its investor with an, investors with an $800 million stock buyback, buyback. They lied about saving jobs. They lied about where the money would go. But the biggest House Bill 6 lie was that it was a clean energy bill. In addition to saving two aging nuclear power plants, House Bill 6 bailed out two of the oldest coal burning power plants in the country. One of them is in another state. House Bill 6 eliminated energy efficiency programs so consumers would not only pay a monthly average of $7 more for their electricity, but receive the privilege of breathing polluted air. Thanks to investigators in the U.S. Attorney's Office, we now know the true reasons for House Bill 6, to enrich Wall Street investors, and to benefit corrupt politicians in Ohio's General Assembly. I urge lawmakers to restore public trust by immediately and completely repealing House Bill 6. It is the only acceptable path forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. We appreciate you being with us today. All right, next we will hear from Dr. Bull, followed by Sandy Wood, and then Carolyn Harden-Levine. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go right ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sick this morning and uh, um, I wanted to make sure my was working. Um, good morning. My name is Aparna Bolt and I'm a pediatrician in Cleveland. I'm here representing the Ohio Clinicians for Climate Action. We're a network of clinicians and health professionals here in Ohio who are concerned about the impacts of climate change and air pollution that we're seeing in our patients here and now. And we understand that solutions to climate change and clean air have immediate and sustained health benefits for our patients and communities. I'm here to advocate for the immediate repeal of, of House Bill 6 because it sends us in the wrong direction on the clean energy transition that Ohio needs to protect our public health and also because of the corrupt nature of this passage. Climate change and air pollution is the world health and list global health. But these aren't only global health threats, they're local health threats. And we know from ample climate science that we're in a critical window about the next decade to accelerate climate action to prevent the most catastrophic health, ecological, and, and economic consequences of climate change. Here in Cleveland, I see the impacts of climate change on my pediatric patients every day. Worsened air quality, longer and more intense allergy seasons, more severe heat waves, more extreme precipitation events changing patterns of infectious disease and water quality issues like toxic algae in Northwest Ohio also affect Ohioans' health. 
today. Moreover, the direct contribution of fossil fuel combustion to air pollution contributes to asthma exacerbations, poor birth outcomes like low birth weight and prematurity, both risk factors for infant mortality, and neurodevelopmental toxicity, harming kids' learning, cognition, and behavior, putting them at higher risk for school failure and lifelong impacts on productivity and quality of life. And the benefits of clean air are being underscored right now by the current respiratory pandemic that we find ourselves in. We know that air quality contributes to COVID-19 outcomes and other respiratory infections. In Cleveland, over one in five kids has asthma. I see kids in my practice who can't always safely go out to play on days with poor air quality because it can trigger dangerous asthma exacerbation. If we're serious about addressing infant mortality, improving school readiness, and decreasing the burden of chronic disease in our children, we need to get serious about clean air and clean energy. We also have data to support the fact that when comparing the return on investment in clean energy across U.S. regions, the Great Lakes and the Upper Midwest actually stand to benefit the most when health and economic benefits are considered. So in other words, at this urgent moment for climate action, Ohio citizens stand to benefit the most from accelerating our transition to clean and renewable energy from immediate and sustained improvement in our public health. And this health benefit especially protects our children. Climate solutions are child health solutions. Transitioning to clean energy and ensuring cleaner air have immediate benefits to our children's health. So of all places in the country, we here in Ohio need to be leading the way on clean air and climate action. Ohio's clinicians are concerned about HB6 provisions that roll back our state's energy efficiency and renewable portfolio standards. We're concerned about increased barriers to developing new wind energy projects. And we're concerned about its taxpayer-funded bailouts of dirty coal plants and utilities that are actively seeking to hold us back in our state's clean energy transition. We know also that a healthy democracy is important for a healthy state, and we're concerned about the corruption of HB6's passage undermining the health of our democracy. So for the sake of Ohio's health, especially our children, we need to repeal HB6 without delay. Thanks for the opportunity to testify today. Dr. Bull, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. We really appreciate it. So as you may have seen in our chat box, we have a slight change to our schedule as we wait for uh, Sandy Wood and Carolyn Harden-Levine to log in. We are going to move to Dr. Peggy Berry, who then is likely to be followed by Melanie Oyster and Brian Howard. Dr. Berry, you're up. Thank you. Um, there's my camera. <laughs> Uh, thank you for allowing me to testify. Um, my name is Peggy Berry, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio. I am a registered nurse, a mom, a grandma, and I am an environmental activist. And I want House Bill 6 gone. Uh, let's face it, it was signed into law with the support of former uh, House uh, Speaker. Larry Householder, and although HB6 was presented as a clean energy bill, all it did was put obstacles and barriers into any type of commitment for green energy, passing the cost on to Ohio consumers. I find that deplorable. Uh, House Bill 6 favored 20th century technology and put barriers into place against the current and emerging green technologies that will reduce our dependency on carbon-based energy, polluting our air, water, and land. I'll not get into the dirty politics associated with HB6, but our state legislators need to know that we, the Ohio citizens, we put them in the office, and we can vote them out of that office. Uh, if I am to regain my trust in our legislators, they need to do what is right and repeal House Bill 6 now. Now. Don't wait. Don't wait for Ohio citizens to see the new charges on their bills with this time in COVID. We're having enough problems paying our bills sometimes. Uh, it is not an energy policy. It, but a bailout for coal plants and nuclear power plants when green technology create jobs. A new jobs report by the Political Economic Research Institute released yesterday determined that 235,000 jobs would be created if we were to get fine funding. 
So as a registered nurse, I know it's bad. The, the coal plants are bad. So what I wanna see is our legislators actively repealing HB6 now. Thank you so much for letting me testify. Thanks so much for being with us today, Peggy. We appreciate it. Okay, next up, we're going to hear from Melanie Oyster, followed by Brian Howard. There we go. Hi, Melanie. You're on mute, just give it one second. There you go, you're all set. I'm here with my husband, Harold. We live in Gahanna. The most important reasons to repeal HB6 are to restore Ohio's vision toward cleaner, safer energy and to restore the innovation and investment incentives stripped by this bill. Our lawmakers already have statistics backing up these reasons. Our lawmakers also already have the words of U.S. Attorney David DeVillers calling HB6, quote, likely the largest bribery money laundering scheme ever perpetrated against the people of the state of Ohio. What I can add to the discussion is my personal experience of dirty tricks that doomed the citizen referendum to repeal HB6. Harold and I went to the Worthington Farmers Market to sign the petition. We were prepared to read the petition carefully before signing as we knew false petitions were being circulated. Dirty trick number one. The petition holder told us about being assaulted earlier that week, his phone taken and destroyed. Dirty trick number two. This dirty trick can be corroborated by a search through Columbus Dispatch records. Dirty trick number three was a pro HB6 flyer mailed to our home that seemed to be an attempt to scare us into locking our doors and calling a hotline if we happened to see a petitioner depicted in the flyer as a shadowy man peering into our window. These three dirty tricks are just the ones Harold and I personally experienced. Our legislature needs to disassociate our state from HB6 right now. Thank you. Thanks so much to both of you for sharing your story. We really appreciate you taking the time today. Okay, next we're going to hear from Brian Howard and then Andrea Lynch. Hello, can folks hear me? Yep, you're good to go. Great. Uh, my name is Brian Howard and on behalf of the American Council on an Energy Efficient Economy, a nonprofit research organization based in Washington, DC, I join, I join folks today and urge a repeal of House Bill 6. Ohio passed uh, legislation in 2008 establishing energy savings goals for utilities and they began implementing programs to meet them the following year. Before passage of HB6, Ohio's energy programs had saved enough uh, energy to power every home in Ohio for over 14 months. The success has clear economic benefits, not just for program participants, but for ratepayers in, in the state. All customers save uh, on their utility bills because energy efficiency reduces total demand and reduces the wholesale cost of electricity. Ohio energy savings goals produced over $7 billion for families and businesses across the state. Repeal of HB6 will restore energy savings goals and uh, help support families and businesses throughout the state. Studies from uh, utilities serving the state and independent research from ACEEE has identified clear pathways to meet the state's previous goals. Restoring these targets can also provide a, ne a needed economic boost. Recent findings uh, show that over 12,000 energy efficiency jobs have been lost in Ohio since the public health emergency. While a broader response will be needed to address economic conditions, reinstating efficiency goals can help provide immediate opportunities for many uh, individuals who have suffered from recent job loss. The current lack of energy uh, reduction goals is also out of step with the region. Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Illinois all have requirements to meet uh, annual electricity uh, savings targets and maintain strong efficiency programs. 
these policies work, states with energy savings policies uh, have a savings level of more than three times as high as states without them. We urge a repeal of HB6, which would restore important efficiency programs that benefit families in Ohio. Thank you for the time today and have a great day. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Thank Next, you. we will hear from Andrea Lynch, followed by Jennifer Pick. We're getting closer. I'm sorry. No, 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 never... it's not you. You're fine. Oh, you're sideways, but. <laughs> oh. Okay, hang on. There. There you better? go. Ah. Yep, you are all set to go. Thank you so much for being with us. Be challenged. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all these days? <laughs> okay. My name is Andrea Jean Nesser Lynch. I'm your concerned constituent, a lifelong citizen of Franklin County, Ohio. I have voted since I was legally permitted in 1970. But what concerns me the most, there have been rapid changes in our culture and government, but what concerns me the most is the rise of blatant corruption in the last few years. And now we learned that over $61 million was spent to push through House Bill 6 that affects every citizen of, the, of Ohio in several crucial ways. My voting children, husband, and friends all signed petitions to put HB6 up for a ballot vote so that citizens could help decide their fate, its fate. Instead, the Ohio House ignored the outcry of citizens and refused to allow that. Then they voted this bad bill into law by only one vote, nowhere near a majority. That should have raised questions, but Governor DeWine signed it into law anyway. With little apparent consideration for the health and future of Ohio citizens, HB6 was approved and put into law. Instead of moving forward with green, renewable, safe energy, which is our future, you bought into bailing out dirty, antiquated, pollution-producing energy, and worse yet, at the expense of laws already in place to move forward with clean, renewable energy, which is our future. With all of this now known to the public, HB6 should be repealed and those who profited from their underhanded manipulation of our government to meet their own monetary and power lust should be held accountable to the citizens of Ohio, including a certified accounting of monies already given to HB6 companies and players. Thank you very much for your consideration. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we're, go we're going to hear from Jennifer Pick and then Timothy Gassick. Jennifer, thanks, you're all set. Thank you. Um, my name's Jennifer Pick. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I'm speaking today because HB6 represents the failure of democracy and common sense in Ohio. It should be repealed because it was the result of egregious fraud and bribery in both the passage of the bill and the campaign of lies and intimidation that occurred in response to the citizens' attempt to overturn it by ballot measure. This fraud is seemingly ongoing. Our state senators are refusing to move the repeal bills out of the new House Select Committee on Energy Policy and Oversight. You have to ask yourself why. HB6 props up failing polluting coal plants, one of which, as has been pointed out, is in Indiana, to the tune of $50 million per year to be paid by Ohio consumers. It will cost Ohioans $150 million more per year in subsidies for First Energy Corporation, now Energy Harbor, the owners of the two nuclear plants, a corporation that has just received approval to buy back $800 million of its stock, not a sign of a corporation that needs a bailout. Notably, the Republican legislators refused to consider a provision that would require the recipients of the bailouts to demonstrate need before the subsidies were paid. On a side note, I would like to say that nuclear energy is in fact somewhat different to coal. It has negligible carbon emissions, but comes with the risks of major harm in the event of failure of a power plant, for example, Fukushima, or terrorist attack, or the issues of safe disposal of waste. 
there is a case to be made that well-regulated and protected nuclear energy can be part of the solution to climate change. This should be the subject of a proper public conversation about our energy future in Ohio without being clouded by the issues of fraud and self-dealing that hang over HB6. HB6 ended our renewable portfolio standard and energy efficiency requirements that were on track to provide $4 billion in energy efficiency savings to consumers over the next 10 years. These programs aided in growing Ohio's clean energy sector. Instead, we are losing jobs and income to neighboring states. Now more than ever, we need to be growing our green energy resources and putting private and government funds towards this goal. The net climate effect of HB6 is equivalent to putting 2 million more cars on the road. And 64% of Ohio voters support repealing HB6. It's bad for Ohio's green energy, bad for the financial interests of Ohioans. It came out of a corrupt process and is a corrupt bill serving only Murray Energy and First Energy who found willing partners in Larry Householder and his team who were happy to perpetrate this fraud on Ohio taxpayers. It's a prime example of pay to play and how dark money and corruption can subvert good policy and the best interests of our constituents. I call on Bob Cup and Larry Obhoff to do their jobs and represent Ohio voters in moving the repeal bills out of committee and to a full floor vote Thank you for allowing me to speak today. Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us and thanks for your time. Okay. Just to let everyone know, we are running pretty far ahead of schedule. Um, I wanna thank everyone for keeping to their two minutes. I think that that's made a big difference. Um, next, we have Timothy Gassick. Timothy, you're Hello. all set. Hi, uh, as much as I echo the concerns about how bad this bill is for Ohio and for Ohio moving forward with green energy as a beekeeper and environmentalist myself, I'm going to stick to my statement about my greater concern. My name is Timothy Gasick and I live in Medina, Ohio. In light of the fraud and criminal acts directly related to and why, in my opinion, House Bill 6 even passed, I am requesting that Ohio lawmakers act immediately to repeal HB 6, which was a great deal for corrupt politicians and business in Ohio and a very bad deal for Ohio taxpayers, as well as fair competition and green energy. Furthermore, in light of the criminal acts that led to its passage, I am demanding, yes, demanding that our state legislature, attorney general, and other relevant offices immediately investigate all Ohio representatives that supported the bill for possible impropriety and acceptance of bribes in any form, as well as any members of the Ohio business community that improperly benefited from its passage. It is highly unlikely, in my opinion, and inconceivable as high up in our government, our state government, these fraudulent acts went that other representatives were unaware of and not complicit in the fraud committed on Ohio residents in the passage of this bill. I demand that all guilty parties are ferreted out and brought to justice to restore faith in our Ohio government and its political institutions. Thank you for your time and thank you to every Ohioan speaking out against this bad bill. Timothy, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being with us today and offering that unique perspective. Just as a reminder um, as to why it is that we're here today, it's been three months to the day since the news broke of the alleged $61 million bribery scandal spearheaded by former Ohio House Speaker Larry Householder surrounding House Bill 6. And even before the scandal became front page news, we knew House Bill 6 was a bad bill. It was widely opposed by Ohioans because it bails out nuclear and coal plants at a cost of over a billion dollars to Ohio consumers. And now the Ohio House Select Committee on Energy Policy and Oversight was created to consider a clean repeal of House Bill 6, but it did not move very far in the two bills that would repeal House Bill 6. We have been told that hearings have been suspended until further notice. Ohioans can't afford to wait to have their voices heard 
on why this bill is bad for their health, their pocketbooks, and their economic future. And that is why we are holding this hearing today. If you know of others who would like to testify who are not available today, we will be also holding hearings on Tuesday, October 27th and Thursday, October 29th. Already in the chat box, you can see the link. There it is, a bit.ly link, bit.ly slash repeal HB6 testimony. All right, next up to speak, we have Randy Lepla. Hi, Tracy, thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Randy Lepla, Vice President of Energy Policy and Lead Energy Council for the Ohio Environmental Council Action Fund. Uh, I'm pleased to join with all the other important voices here today, three months to the day. Uh, House Bill 6 re-entered the public's mind in a new way through allegations of corrupt pay-to-play dealings by former Speaker Householder to again call for the repeal of House Bill 6 in full. Even before these concerning revelations, House Bill 6 was a bad deal for Ohioans, sticking us with dirtier air and higher utility bills while gutting our clean energy future. It's a bill that was passed on the backs of Ohioans, costing consumers more money, cutting Ohioans clean energy jobs, and polluting our environment by killing our energy efficiency and renewable energy standards. House Bill 6 is already weighing heavy on Ohioans' health and pocketbooks and that's why we're calling on Ohio legislators to take action to repeal House Bill 6 now. Because of House Bill 6, charges to subsidize coal plants have already been extended through 2030, keeping ener dirty energy online in Ohio and also paying to keep it online in Indiana, where some of our money is going to bail out one of the coal plants. Because of House Bill 6, Ohio's energy efficiency programs are shutting down. As of the first of this month, Ohioans lost the ability to take advantage of incentives and rebates that helped us save money on our electric bills by reducing our energy consumption. These programs were good for our wallets and our health, for our economy, and they were good for our environment. These programs helped Ohioans save $7.01 per month, and with the passage of House Bill 6, now over 85,000 Ohio careers in the efficiency industry are at risk. Because of House Bill 6, the incredible demand we've seen for renewable energy around this state could be stifled. Ohioans overwhelmingly want clean energy, and House Bill 6 skews the playing field, providing a bailout for dirty, aging, and expensive forms of energy at the expense of cheaper, cleaner options. Because of House Bill 6, Ohioans' money is going to First Energy and Energy Harbor to bail out two nuclear plants without any proof the bailout is needed. Ohio lawmakers should not be doling out Ohioans' hard-earned money without making absolutely sure the taxpayer money would not simply go to line First Energy shareholders' pockets. But Ohio lawmakers can still take action to halt the impacts of this bad bill in reverse course. They can ensure Ohioans' future, including our health, our economy, and our environment are bright and sustainable. We can invest in a clean energy future that drives job creation and improves our air quality. Ohioans were overwhelmingly opposed to House Bill 6, and yet it passed through the legislature and was signed by the governor without full consideration for our environment, our economy, and our communities. But this story doesn't have to end there. OEC Action Fund calls on our lawmakers to immediately repeal House Bill 6 and have an honest discussion about what Ohioans want and need for our energy future. Restore Ohioans' faith in the State House and repeal House Bill 6. OEC Action Fund looks forward to discussing the policies that will enable Ohioans to thrive in a sustainable clean energy future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Randy. Appreciate it. And thank you so much to each of our witnesses today for joining us for what was our first attempt to add a public hearing on efforts to repeal House Bill 6. We appreciate everyone taking the time to be sure their voice was heard regarding the repeal efforts. If you know of someone who would like to provide remarks, remember there are still two more opportunities. Uh, these are evening opportunities from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And let them know that they can register at our bit.ly link, which is bit.ly slash repeal HB6 testimony. Thanks again for your time and remarks today regarding efforts to repeal House Bill 6. Enjoy the rest of your day.